some players are literally losing their minds over the reveal of Belisarius yesterday so today I want to take a little bit of time to talk about eight things eight things that I think some people missed about Belisarius his kit his implications for the game I'm going to talk about why I think he could be the swarming king and why I'm actually kind of happy that Belisarius has the kit that he does but first what's going on guys cheers now look once in a while I like to poke fun at the Cav mains because I feel like there's a lot of cavalry mains in rise of kingdoms and I think when they don't get their way or they don't hear the things that they want to hear they get a little bit emotional okay and look I run two cavalry two infantry and one archer so I am just as much a cav main as I am an infantry main if I had to pick I would be a little bit more towards infantry but I just feel like I feel like we got to calm down as a community a little bit here okay let me go over a couple of important things here but of course 69 percent of you not subscribed go ahead and click the sub button drop a thumbs up let's do it the first thing is this active skill and it's actually worse than I thought for open field fighting okay I think this active skill is going to be really good in either rallies or garrisons but it's going to be really not good as or not as good as I thought in the open field and why is that well it's probably going to miss timing every single time that it goes off what do I mean by this well if you have a huo with Belisarius and just as an example I used epic Belisarius here doesn't matter what the secondary is but Huo with the Horn of Fury, I think Prox once in here. Oh, sorry, we got it twice. We got it on turn four as well. But even with two horn procs and the lower rage costs, Huo casts on turn seven, which means a secondary casts on turn nine. And if the enemy has the skill tree and has a horn of fury and all that stuff, they're probably gonna cast on between turns eight and nine most likely depending on the commander and remember the debuff like let's say Belisarius Prime casts on turn nine the debuff that it applies is going to take effect on the next turn so even if the Belisarius Prime casts on turn nine if the enemy casts on turn nine as well they're still going to get their normal rage cost they're not going to have that rage reduction until the following turn after they've already casted their skill right so unless you're going up against like a really slow rage regeneration commander pairing you're you're gonna miss the timing here right now let's be real this is not a realistic scenario okay most likely when you enter into a battle you both don't start at zero rage right like you're probably gonna be hitting someone that has some amount of rage from fighting somebody else that's how it works in a big open field murder ball right so yes it will miss timing in a perfect scenario but a lot of the times you're still gonna hit them and and it, this debuff is still going to do something right because it's five seconds that it costs 200 more rage five seconds that's a really long time the probability that you eventually get value out of this in the open field is very high but the fact that it does miss timing for perfect scenarios like that is kind of ironic it's like this is a skill that you want to pop before anything else and it's on a commander that is doomed to be secondary forever right and so like the synergy there is kind of off even though again in a real world scenario you will be applying this debuff and getting value out of it it just from a design perspective feels uh, a little bit off right it feels a little bit weird now the next thing I want to cover here that a lot of people missed is something that I saw rally leaders talking about obviously but everyone else kind of forgot about this and that's Justinian Justinian primary with Belisarius secondary could be a really powerful cavalry rally why is that well the active skill on Justinian guarantees at least three troops for calculating the surrounded effect on Belisarius's skills so what does that mean well if Belisarius is secondary to Justinian in a rally scenario then when you're hitting that flag or fort you don't actually have to surround it to get the deception debuff for five seconds which means you are always going to get the maximum amount of value from the active skill on Belisarius whether the target is surrounded or not the active skill on Justinian will guarantee that at least three targets are calculated as far as surrounded effects go which applies here and also you have to remember the expertise here they're always going to have at least six percent more damage taken right the the enemy I mean and we're going to talk about this expertise in a second and I actually have to brush up on my Justinian knowledge I don't know if this sets the surrounded troops to three or if it adds three plus the Justinian so it would be four in that case then the target will always be taking nine percent more damage whether it's being surrounded or not that's actually kind of crazy so I think when we ask ourselves like what commander is Belisarius Prime built for it could be built for being a decent open field commander but being a broken secondary to an already existing rally commander that we have in the game Justinian right and also like when Justinian came out a lot of players used Nevsky with Justinian as the rally 
and Nevsky is a little bit old these days not saying he's not good but like it didn't feel like that was the match made in heaven like of course Nevsky has the defense reduction on the active skill so it did actually work out really well there but it didn't feel like oh yeah Justinian was made for Nevsky whereas it could be the case that Justinian was made for Belisarius or maybe vice versa because Belisarius comes after but the other thing that we have to talk about is the mightiest governor commander a lot of people are drawing conclusions on Justinian's kit without seeing what his counterpart can or do right without knowing anything about that and it could be the case that we're looking at this kit and saying well who is this for who should you pair them with and the answer could be the mightiest governor commander that comes out with him right i don't think that would be a ridiculous stretch i mean really a legendary cavalry mobility tree commander like there's a lot about belisarius's kit that kind of breaks the mold it's not exactly what we were expecting right we were a lot of players at least myself included were expecting an open field cap commander with aoe right because we got huo last time which was single target this time we expected aoe and he doesn't do that he breaks the mold and honestly his kit is a little bit unorthodox it's a little bit weird it does a couple of things that like it adds this debuff that we've never seen before right so it's not necessarily like a cookie cutter expectation um, of a commander and so it's perfectly reasonable to assume that whoever his mightiest governor commander counterpart is could also completely shock us it could be completely something that we're not expecting at all and if that's the case like what if the the mightiest governor commander that comes out with him has a skill that says you know every time the target loses rage they take 800 damage factor or something like that or a thousand damage factor right like it's just too early to tell right we could be waiting for the perfect pair for belisarius and it could be his mightiest governor commander now if we look back on zhang yu i feel like a lot of players use zhang yu as an open field commander but he's a rally commander right and he only has one skill that really cares about being in a rally and so i think it's perfectly reasonable to assume that we're expecting the mightiest governor commander this time around to be a guarantee garrison commander and if that's the case if the new cab garrison has maybe one skill that's perfect for garrison and the other three skills are broken in the field I mean you could be looking at a perfect pairing there right now I should at least add to that by saying we've never seen a cav garrison commander work in the open field right like you never see Jan Ziska in the field you never see Yadviga in the field it just doesn't happen it's never been a thing but again that just because it's never been a thing doesn't mean it can't start being a thing right so who knows? Uh, it's unlikely, but it could be the case that maybe we get a garrison version of Zhang Yu that has a lower rage requirement. It's got AOE, and instead of the conquering tree, it's the garrison tree, and it's Zhang Yu 2.0, and it has 2400 damage factor AOE. Like all of a sudden, people are going to change their tune about Belisarius if it has perfect synergy, right? Like with, again, instant proc damage for rage debuff, something along those lines. It's just too early to tell. The fourth thing that I want to cover here is the expertise again. And of course, we covered the expertise in my initial video here, but I just want to, you know, throw a couple more thoughts out there at you guys. Okay. It says if the current target of this commander's troop is surrounded, increases the targets damage received based on the number of troops surrounding it so it's not that you're dealing more damage to the target it's that the target takes more all damage okay which means anybody hitting that target is going to be dealing more damage either six nine or twelve percent okay this is way better than buffing your own damage okay debuffing the target and making them take more damage is infinitely scalable and it's really gonna help when you're swarming down structures now something else that i pointed out in my original video is that this says if you have five troops swarming then they take 12 percent more damage we don't know what happens if you have six troops swarming seven troops swarming anything higher right my assumption and based on you know logic would be if it's five troops or more they take 12 percent more damage right it would be kind of foolish for it to be you know if you have over five well oh now your debuff goes away right like that would be kind of stupid but this is instant proc this happens immediately as soon as there are enough people swarming a, a player a structure a, a flag fort whatever it's literally better than maxing out surprise strike from the crystal tech tree okay this gives you 10% all damage when you're hitting a flag or a rally or anything like that. And of course, this is great for whales, right? Because they're going to be the ones swarming down the flags and the rallies and everything like that. This is literally better than that. Okay. It's the target taking 12% more damage. So if there's other players 
hitting that target that don't have a Belisarius, they're still benefiting. And it's 12% more all damage taken compared to the 10% all damage dealt from surprise strike. Okay. So I think that this expertise, I can't really state this enough, but I feel like if you are a well and you're running six, seven armies, okay. And you are the type of person that swarms flags and forts, this is the commander for you. Like, I think that might be the role that Belisarius plays especially because you're also going to be forcing that flag or fort to pop their active skills a little bit less frequently. Now, I also talked about this uh, with one of my uh, alliance leaders, and he said, you know, when you're swarming something down, typically what you care about most is the counterattack damage, right? Like that's really what hurts you, which is true, right? You typically, it's like you're more scared of the massive amounts of counterattack damage than you are from like a single skill pop of Zhuge Liang or something like that, right? So that's still true. And I think that like this debuff, you know, from, from a swarming perspective, isn't going to move the needle that much. This will, but this debuff from a perhaps rally perspective, Justinian Belisarius, this debuff could be actually insane. And you also have to consider that if you're rallying a flag or fort with Justinian Belisarius, then you're getting all the benefits of the active skill. And the Belisarius from the rally is the one that's going to be causing the target to take 12% more damage, which means all of the swarmers don't even have to be a Belisarius. You don't even have to have a Belisarius in the, in the equation besides the one in the rally, right? So, you know, there's, there's definitely some synergy there. And I think that the Belisarius prime could be the, the swarm King, you guys, I'm not even kidding. Like that could actually be the case, but here comes point number five that I think people missed. And that is that it makes the rally strategy a little bit weird because if you're rallying a flag or fort then you lose the 30 percent skill damage right if this commander troop is attacking another troop on the map and the target troop has less than 80 percent units remaining you get 30 percent skill damage but if you're rallying a flag or fort the flag or fort is a garrison it is not on the map and therefore you lose the 30 percent skill damage bonus in a rally scenario so like even if there is synergy with Justinian, which I think there is, there's a little bit of lacking synergy here, which is like, wh why, why did they design Belisarius this way? It makes no sense. However, point number six also has to deal with this skill. And that is that, as I stated before, we're expecting the, this is just a guess, but we're expecting the mightiest governor commander to be a garrison cavalry commander. And if that's the case, then putting Belisarius prime as the secondary to whoever that cav garrison is, will give them the 30% more skill damage. And you'll pretty much have that up all the time, right? The way that troops remaining works, the game is calculating all the troops that are in the rally that you might be hitting. So that includes all of the healthy troops, slightly wounded troops, the troops that haven't gone back to the city yet that have, that are out of the battle. So the target dropping below 80% is going to happen pretty quickly. And it's going to stay there for the remainder of the rally. So in a garrison scenario, you're going to have 30% more skill damage pretty much all the time. If you use Belisarius as a secondary to that garrison. And also I want to point out once again, that the debuff on the active skill on Belisarius is really going to shine in the long-term fights. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, you might miss the timing for this in open field fights, quick exchanges, but for really long battles, there's no way to compensate the 30 rage per second. You're going to lose for two seconds. Okay. And so the longer a fight goes on, the higher, the probability that this is all going to line up, right? It's going to line up. And all of a sudden the rally is going to start to take more rage to pop their skills. And the longer that you stay in that scenario, the, the worse off the rally is going to be. And so the rally will be popping their active skills slower. Meanwhile, your active skills have 30% more skill damage the whole time, and you're still taking 10% less skill damage as well. So yeah. And then also if you start to swarm the rally down, then insane, right? Insane. You don't even need a Belisarius involved in the swarming because he'll already be in the garrison applying this massive debuff to that rally. So he could make rallies super swarmable guys. He really could. And that's, I mean, we, we have to wait and see, but it could, it could be completely broken having Belisarius as a secondary to whoever the next cav garrison meta is. Now, the seventh point that I want to cover here has to do with Justinian once again, but this time from an open field perspective. And I think that right now, if players are running three cavalry armies, which most players are not, but if you're a cav main, maybe you are, if you're a whale, whatever. And if you're doing that, you're probably running, you know, Nevsky, Joan, who William, or you'll flip those secondaries around depending. And if you do that, then you're probably running Zhang Yu primary with Justinian secondary. I think a lot of cav mains are doing that 
for open field fighting and it's obvious to you know it's obvious why it works but maybe the cav whales actually retire zhang yu now right because i mentioned in my first belisarius video that you would want a lower rage cost for belisarius but now that we know that you know he's probably going to miss timing a lot with the active skill debuff anyway then maybe he's not like forced to be with a lower rage cost commander and if that's the case well then you could do justinian primary with belisarius secondary as an open field march now when justinian is fighting in the open field and he's not a rally then he's kind of just a vanilla stat stick but he still hits really hard and if we consider the justinian with belisarius and we look at their kit it's going to be a 2500 damage factor from justinian and a 2400 damage factor from belisarius which is nothing to ignore those both hit really hard they're gonna have a total of 55 percent cavalry defense they're gonna have a total of an extra five percent cav damage and 35 percent march speed outside of territory or just the 20 percent from belisarius anywhere else on the map justinian gives belisarius the 20 percent health that he desperately needs that's the one stat that we don't see on belisarius at all and here we see it on justinian and then if we look at the expertise here which modifies the fourth skill then the commander pairing those two together are going to have 45 percent attack and whenever you launch a basic attack against a surrounded target is a 30 percent chance to deal an extra direct damage factor of up to 500 you also have an instant proc 500 on a uh, belisarius so it's kind of a complete package from a stats perspective you've got decent march speed and a lot of a ton of stats right and both commanders just hit like a truck the belisarius has a nice debuff there some instant proc damage i mean again it would be your third cavalry march so most players aren't going to use it but as a whale i think this is gonna hurt really bad guys now i'm using my saladin to show off what a open field talent build might look like for a Justinian Belisarius you get two points in rejuvenate for a ton of extra rage you get emergency protection which reduces skill damage by 15 percent for three seconds half the time you grab in blazon shield to take 12 percent less skill damage on top of that you also get the rage engine from burning blood and from undying fury you deal nine percent more damage to archers and you have a 10 percent chance to give the target a 15 percent attack reduction for two seconds and you further reduce your skill damage taken by nine percent so with all of the defense and health on that kit plus the support talent tree i feel like you're gonna be pretty tanky as an open field cav march plus your gear is going to be mostly health based right because that's what most of calves have we have cav defense on the helmet but we have cav health on the chest on the gloves on the legs and on the boots right so like this actually could be a super tanky march but on top of that remember it's also going to have a ton of attack march speed and hit really hard with both active skills with a debuff on the second one so like i mean it could actually be a really good open field pairing and i think people will be surprised now here's the eighth point and this is arguably my least popular people are not going to like to hear this right but i think it's the most important and that is that cavalry didn't need a broken commander a lot of players expected it to be the Liu Che or the Zhuge Liang for cavalry. I was hoping that would be the case as well, quite frankly, because I have a ton of sculptures saved and I run two cav armies. I was hoping to get an insane open field cav commander and I could immediately max it, right? And that'd be amazing. But the truth is that like cavalry didn't need a Liu Che or Zhuge Liang. They just didn't. I would argue ever since we saw Zhang Yu come into the game, I feel like Cavs have kind of been the open field meta. Now, at some points, they've had a much larger lead. Right now, they don't really have a, a massive lead. But in general, I feel like it's been years that cavalry have kind of always been the open field meta. And like, it makes sense, right? Because if we think about like, what is infantry known for? Garrison. What is archers known for? Rallies. So therefore, what would Cavs be known for? open field and so it kind of makes sense right but at the end of the day Cavs aren't in a horrible place at all we have Nevsky we have Huo we have Joan and we have William and the beautiful part about this is that some of these commanders like William and like Nevsky have been in the game for years so players are still getting value out of investments they made years ago so if this is a commander that you feel like you are going to skip even as a cav main then that's probably a good thing it saves you gems on the wheel it saves you money from spending if you were going to spend it saves you sculptures to put in something else and again you still have two really powerful open field cavalry marches that you can run in the open field and 
again if you're looking for a third I still think the Justinian Belisarius is gonna hit like a freaking truck man I really do and so I don't think Cav needed a broken commander right if we look at Liu Che I think it makes sense that infantry would get a broken open field commander why because infantry was garbage in the open field before Liu Che came out and now Liu Che is great because he can pair with everybody he can pair with Alex he can pair with CPO he can pair with Gorgo there's a lot you can do with Liu Che and if we look at you know archers the thing about archers right now like Juge Leong one of the best commanders in the game top two if not number one right I personally think Liu Che is the best commander in the game but you could definitely make an argument for Juge Leong and you might not be wrong okay I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna debate that okay it depends on who you're talking to but Liu Che insanely good commander Herman Prime insanely good commander but guys this I'm gonna just from my experience in this kvk do i get good reports with them absolutely are they slow as hell yes dude and it's super frustrating that we would have a i mean i don't know why but it seems like archers always feel squishy no matter what and even though we've got some march speed here on herman like it's still such a slow army it's 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 crazy right like i'm working on my boots before i'm working on these other purple pieces because i just need that march speed from the from the fourth iconic upgrade like it's crazy man it's such a slow army but what i'm trying to say is zhang yu came out on april 26th 2021 so that's literally by the time Belisarius comes into the game, that will have been three years. Okay. So for the past three years, I would argue that Cavs have been the dominant open field troop type. And look, like they're still in a really good spot right now. I've already explained that. And I don't think like if you disagree with that, I think you're really not being intellectually honest. I think both of these commander pairs are exceptionally good in the open fields. Are they the best commanders on the field right now? Maybe not. Sure. Right. I'm, I'm with you on that one, but it's not like they're unusable. Okay. And if Cavs have been open field meta for literally three years from a game balance perspective it would make sense to have another troop type carry that torch for a little bit that's my opinion okay so whether you think infantry is the best open field right now or you think archers are the best open field right now that's up for debate and that's fine I think you could make a good case for all of them I think the only thing holding archers back right now is how freaking slow they are which is ironic because infantry should be in that boat except infantry have the four piece set bonus here which really does help them out a ton so yeah if Belisarius Prime is lackluster in the open field, right? Like, let's say that he is exceptionally good as a secondary in the garrison, or he's exceptionally good as a secondary to Justinian rallies, but he's lackluster in the open field. Well, does that mean that Cav aren't open field meta? Maybe, but is that necessarily a bad thing from a game balance perspective? I don't think so. I think every once in a while, it should be a good thing for another troop type to be the open field meta. And I think the reason cavalry players, a lot of the mains right now are freaking out and they're losing their minds is because they're so used to having it their way. They're so used to being the open field meta that the possibility that they might have to go a, a year not being the open field meta when they've been open field meta for three years is like, now you know how everyone else feels. Now you know how the infantry players felt. Now you know how the archer players have felt, right? And look, I think archers have always been pretty good in the open field. They've had YSG, they've had great AOE damage. It is what it is. But from my perspective, I think Cavs have been open field meta since Zhang Yu. That's just me. You guys can argue about that in the comment section below. But at the end of the day, I think people are drawing conclusions way too quickly about Belisarius. We didn't even see his mightiest governor counterpart yet. And we have no idea how good his reports could be from a rally or garrison perspective he could be insane what if this expertise stacks what if it stacks right now I don't think it will but like we don't know these little tiny details right the a lot of times this initial release text isn't perfect do you guys remember when Herman Prime came out and literally 24 hours later they had to change the text and say oh actually you don't get three stacks when it's a it's two stacks right and that completely changed the math for the double proc of his expertise right or the double proc of his um active skill with his expertise unlocked so like literally this text might not be perfectly accurate there could be a there could be a typo here they could say like it's actually for the next four seconds right like i don't know but like people are just jumping to conclusions way too quickly here when we we don't know a lot of different things and we haven't even seen test results yet guys so let me know what you think did i reveal anything about Belisarius that you might have missed initially I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below that I provide you with anything new to think about from this video hopefully I did that was the point of this let me know in the comments and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace